on the V8 distributor now. You'll be working on them sometime. It always pays to have advance information. And what's more, fellas, the only sure way to check a distributor, whether it's a V8 or any other kind, is with instruments. You can't afford to guess. Yeah, and I suppose this V8 distributor does require more careful attention. Whoa, let's not jump at conclusions, Lou. Precision ignition service is important on any car. But here's a point you want to remember. The faster a car goes, the more critical the ignition gets. Now, since the new V8 has outstanding high-speed performance, it gets up to speeds that require perfect distributor operation. And that's why the new V8 engine has focused more attention on the distributor checks we should make on all cars. Right, Carl. And I'm glad to hear you talk up good ignition service. Eh? Oh, hiya, Tech. Come on and join us. I'm going to tell the boys about this new distributor and the tests we make on it. Now, you'll notice that this V8 distributor has two sets of points. This allows longer build-up time for the magnetic field in the coil. The result is a stronger spark at the plugs at high speed. Now, these points are connected in parallel, with each set grounded. So, as long as either set is closed, the primary circuit is complete. Both sets have to be open in order to break the primary circuit, right? Right, Joe. Now, one set of points is called the maker, and the other is called the breaker. And here's how they work. As these maker points close, they make or complete the primary circuit, and the coil field starts to build up. Now, as the cam continues to rotate, this second or breaker set of points also closes. However, nothing happens because the maker points have already completed the circuit, which is allowing the coil field to build up. Yeah, I can see that. But if nothing happens, why have a second set of points? Keep your shirt on, Lou. I'm coming to that. As the cam continues to rotate, the maker points open. And still nothing happens because one set is still closed, right? Right. Now, the cam continues to rotate, and the breaker points open. And the instant those breaker points open, wham, you got the spark at the plug. Right you are. Since both sets of points are open, the primary circuit is interrupted, and the magnetic field in the coil collapses immediately. Say, Carl, what is meant by dwell angle? Well, that's a good question, Joe. Dwell angle is the number of degrees a distributor cam rotates while the points are closed. Actually, with two sets of points, this distributor gives about six degrees more dwell than an eight-cylinder distributor with a single set of points. Now, the first thing we want to check is the resistance in the primary circuit. Right. The other test we're going to make won't prove a thing if there's resistance in the distributor primary circuit. First, we block open the breaker points by putting a piece of fiber or other insulating material between the movable contact arm and the stationary point bracket. Why can't I put a paper match between the points to block them open? I'll break your arm if I catch you doing that. You tell them why, Carl. <laughs> well, you see, Lou, the match has wax on it. When you pull out the match, you leave wax on the points. That acts as an insulator, so you have a poor electrical contact between the points. Now, we'll flip the battery switch and check the resistance across the closed set of points. The voltage drop shouldn't be more than one-tenth of a volt. This set's okay, Carl. Let's check the other set. Right. Now I'll block open the maker set and rotate the cam again until the breaker set is closed. Hey, look at that needle now. Something's wrong with that set of points, Carl. Right. These points are burned. That's our trouble. Look, why don't you go get a new set of points, Lou, and we'll replace this breaker set. Breaker set? Don't we have to replace both sets? Nope. It's only necessary to change the burned one. Now, while Lou's getting a new point, I'll take this old set out and be all ready. Well, that does it, boys. New set's all in, ready to be tested. Hope you men noticed that Carl wiped those new points with a clean cloth to get off any oil film. That's a detail you don't want to overlook. And don't forget to lubricate that cam to prevent rapid wear of the rubbing block. How does that resistance look now, Lou? Mm-hmm. Well within the one-tenth volt limit, Carl. 
Good. Now let's check the spring tension on both sets of points. We'll block one set open and turn the shaft until the other set is closed. Now, we'll place a spring scale over the movable contact point, making sure that the scale is at right angles to the arm, so we'll get a true reading. And make sure the battery switch is on and the tack well switch is in the calibrate position. Now pull the ring of the tester slowly until the dwell meter needle falls back, showing that the points are open. The reading on the spring scale should be between 17 and 20 ounces. This one's okay, Carl, but you better show them how to adjust the tension on the spring in case it wasn't right. Good idea, Tech. These springs can be adjusted by loosening this spring attaching screw and moving the spring in or out. Low spring tension will cause point float or bounce at high speeds. And that'll cause a high speed miss? That's right. And, of course, too much tension will cause premature wear on the rubbing block. And wear on the rubbing block will reduce point gap and cause points to burn. Now we're ready to adjust the point gap on this new set of points. You can use a feeler gauge to check these new points. And be sure the feeler gauge is clean. But with the old set of points, you'll have to use a dial indicator. Dial indicator? Why can't we check these old points with a feeler gauge, too? That's because a feeler gauge measures from high points on the contact surface and won't show the true point opening. Points that have been in service are apt to be a little irregular and give you a wrong reading with a feeler gauge. And now let's go ahead and make a dwell angle check on this set of points. Hold on a minute. Measuring point gap is actually a way of measuring the number of degrees points are open. I get that. But why measure both gap and dwell? Well, that's because misalignment of points, burrs on the rubbing block, or some other physical defect might give you the right gap, but wrong dwell. And we'll start out by blocking the maker points open, turning the battery switch on, and setting the tack dwell switch to the eight lobe position. Now, we'll adjust the speed control until the tack reads 200 RPM and read the dwell angle on the dwell meter. It should be 27 to 30 and one half degrees for each set of points on this V8 distributor. Now, this dwell is okay. Right, Tech. And if the dwell isn't within limits, you better check the points and the rubbing block. Why check these points separately? After all, you're after total dwell, aren't you? Right, we are after total dwell. But we also want each set of points to do its share of the job. Now, after you've adjusted each set of points, run the distributor at speed ranges from 200 to 2,000 RPM to check the total dwell. And if the dwell of each set of points has been set properly and everything else is okay, the total dwell will be within limits, somewhere between 34 and 36 degrees. You also want to watch for dwell variations. Any variation over 2 degrees means worn shaft or bushing. You wouldn't have to make this check on new cars, would you? You certainly would, Lou. A new distributor will wear out bushings in a hurry if it's installed so there's a bind in the shaft. But more about that later. Hey, somebody better turn that record so Carl can tell us more about checking this distributor. Now, one of the most important functions of a distributor is to maintain the correct timing for all speeds of the engine. Correct. An engine may be timed to a T at idle, but that's no reason to believe timing's right at operating speeds. The advance mechanism may be way off. That's right. Suppose we go over both advance methods so you boys will know how we make the checks. Good idea, Carl. First, you have the mechanical advance. It operates on engine speed, so it affects the developed power of the engine. And since the mechanical advance depends upon distributor shaft speed, it's sometimes called a centrifugal advance. Now... The other distributor advance method is controlled by vacuum and is called the vacuum advance. Vacuum advance depends on throttle opening and primarily affects economy of operation. Right. Now let's start with the centrifugal advance checks first. We'll run the distributor at 200 RPM and set the zero on the degree ring so it'll line up with one of the flashing arrows. And remember, fellas, that means 200 RPM distributor speed. Distributor speed is one-half engine speed. It's a good point, Tech. Now, let's increase the distributor speed till the arrow flash shows two and one-half degrees advance on the degree ring. 
Notice that the tachometer reads about 420. Anything between 350 and 500 RPM is okay. Right, Tech. Well, what if the reading was less than 350? It would mean that the light governor weight spring was weak and letting the timing advance too soon. Right, Carl? Right you are, Joe. And if the tack showed more than 500 RPM, you'd know the light governor weight spring was too strong, making the advance too slow. In either case, you'd have to bend the hanger for the light spring to bring the advance within specification. Right, Carl. And if bending the hanger doesn't do the job, you'll know the weights are sticking or something is wrong with the spring. So you'd have to take the distributor apart and track down the trouble. And now, let's check the strong governor weight spring. We do this by advancing the distributor speed until the tack shows 1,700 RPM. The degree ring should show an advance of from 12 and one half to 14 and one half degrees. This one reads 14, so it's okay. But if the advance was off, you'd have to bend the hanger for the strong spring, same as you did for the light one. What about checking the vacuum advance, Carl? Well, I'm coming to that, Lou. But first, I want to show you how to test the diaphragm, which is inside the vacuum advance unit. A leaking or ruptured diaphragm won't control the ignition advance properly, and gasoline will be wasted. Right. And a leaking diaphragm may blow the distributor cap off. Right, Tech. Now, with the pump turned on, place your thumb over the end of the vacuum hose and adjust the vacuum to read about 10 inches. And after you've made this setting, keep your hands off the control knob while you make the test. Connect the hose to the adapter on the vacuum advance unit and check the gauge. It should read 10 inches, like this one does. Any reading lower than that would indicate a leak in the diaphragm and you'd replace the unit. Say, hey, Carl, why don't you show them how to check the breaker plate bearing while you've got the vacuum hose hooked up? You're reading my mind. Breaker plate bearing? How can you test that? <laughs> you get right up close here, Lou, and I'll show you. You all know that the breaker plate action has to be smooth and even in its travel. Now, if the bearings are worn, the plate will tend to shift, causing the dwell to change. And you all know what change in dwell can do to ignition. Yeah, I can see that. Okay, now let's get started with this test. We start out by setting the distributor speed at 200 RPM. Then we adjust the vacuum to zero with the vacuum regulator knob. Now, advance the vacuum to 20 inches while you watch the dwell meter needle for any variations. If it varies more than two degrees, it indicates worn breaker plate bearing. And that'll mean replacing the plate, huh? Right, Lou. And now that we know that the vacuum diaphragm and the breaker plate bearings are all right, let's see if timing advances like it should. Again, we set the distributor speed at 200 RPM. That's so we won't get a mechanical advance, which would throw our reading off. Then, adjust the vacuum to zero with the regulator knob and set the zero mark of the degree ring in line with one of the flashing arrows. Then, increase the vacuum until the arrow flash on the degree ring has advanced one degree. The vacuum reading should be somewhere between five and one half and six and one half inches. If the reading is less than five and one half inches, add washers to strengthen the action of the vacuum return spring. If it reads more than five and one half, take some washers out. Right, Tech. Now for the second check, increase the vacuum to 10 inches. At 10 inches of vacuum, the degree ring should show an advance of from five to seven degrees. And this one reads six. The third check is made at 17 inches of vacuum. With this much vacuum, the advance should now be somewhere between 10 and one half and 12 and one half degrees. And this one reads 12 degrees advance, so it's okay. Now here's a tip. Check the advance at each of the three vacuum readings before you try to adjust vacuum return spring tension. You see, if the advance is slow on all three checks, you can be pretty sure that the return spring is too strong. Too fast an advance would mean the spring was too weak. Am I right, Carl? Right. You're catching on, Lou. However, if the advance is okay on two checks, but off on the third, you better start looking for a bind in the breaker plate or some interference between the vacuum advance arm and the distributor housing. Well, that about covers the distributor. 
Suppose you install it, Joe. But first, let me give you some installation tips. Make sure the distributor clamp screw pulls down good and snug after a few turns. If it continues to turn easily, you're probably spreading the clamp. In that case, put on a new clamp. You better tell him about setting the timing, Carl. Okay. Setting the timing at idle speed is mighty important. If the idle is too fast, the mechanical advance may have already taken over. So make sure that idle speed is between 475 and 500 RPM before you set the timing. Hey, Carl, you better tell the boys which power on the distributor cap is number one, so they'll know where to connect the timing light. Good idea, Tech. The number one tower is the first tower counterclockwise from the distributor cap clip that's nearest the ignition coil. And fellas, after you get the ignition timed, it's a good idea to make a quick dwell test. It only takes a minute, and it double-checks your work. And here's something else, fellas. A spark plug check ought to be part of every distributor job, too. Clean spark plugs, properly gapped, are mighty important to good performance. Say, Tech, is all the dope on this distributor in the reference book? <laughs> it sure is, Joe. And you'll find a lot of additional information that'll come in handy. You better read it careful, like. And now it's about time for me to take off. What do you fellas think of precision distributor testing now? Say, I'm really convinced that any other method is pure guesswork. Me too. Good. The only way to check ignition is with instruments designed for that job. Just being good enough isn't good enough. You've got to be perfect. 